Shadaba. Thank you, Lord. His eyes are on the sparrow. Oh, and I know he watches. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know he watches. I know. He watches, he watches over me, oh yes he does, oh yes he does, oh yes he does, he watches over me, God is watching over you and me, yes he is. Yes, he is. He watches over me. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He watches over me. God is watching over you and me. Bringing us out, seeing us through. Over me, over me, help is on the way, help is on the way, reach up and claim it, decree it and declare it in your life in this moment, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, he watches over me. Woo! 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 Over me, over me, over me. Ah, chada ba, chada ba. Seeing me through, bringing me out, covering me. Mm. God is watching. God is watching. Uh, God is watching over me. Over me, God is God is watching. Yeah, hey, yeah, God is watching. God is watching over you and me. Woo! God is watching. God is watching over you and me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. God is watching. God is watching over, over me. God is watching, eh. God is watching, yeah. God is watching over, oh. He's watching over me. He's watching over me. He's watching over me. He's watching over me. Watching over me, watching over me, watching over me, woo! Watching over me, he's watching over me, he's watching over me, he's watching over me.
I don't know how I made it here. I don't know how I made it here. I know it was by the grace of God. It was by the grace of God. I don't know how I made it here. I don't know how I made it here. I know it was by the grace of God. It was by the grace of God. Was by the grace of God. Oh, I don't know how I made it here. I know it was by the grace of God. Oh, I made it. I made it by the grace of God. And yes, I'm here. I'm here by the grace of God. Oh, I made it. I made it by the grace of God. And yes.
you don't mind me. I'm just so thankful to my God that you kept me out of harm's way, that you delivered me, that you healed my body, that you set me free. There's nobody that can do me like you do, Lord. There's nobody that can do me like you do, Lord. worship God together for just one moment. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Come on, just for a second, close your eyes, lift your hands, and just talk to God for a moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 
Come on, lift him up. Give him praise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a good God. You're an awesome God. There's no way I can make it without you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I thank 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 you, Jesus. I can't thank you enough for making a way out of no way, for turning my darkness into day, for keeping me out of harm's way, for covering me, Lord, under your blood. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You've been so good, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so kind. There's no one like you, God. Father, we just glorify and we thank you right now for being God. And beside you, there is none other. And God, we can just thank you right now because we see through it all, we learn how to trust in you. Through it all, we've learned how to depend upon your word. We've had many tears and sorrow, questions for tomorrow. Many times we didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, you gave us a blessed consolation that all my trials come to make me strong. And we just bless you right now. God, even through this, God, we are trusting you. Even through this, we're still depending on you. Even through this, God, oh, God, we know you're going to bring us through. And when we get on the other side, oh, God, we'll be able to rejoice. When we get on the other side, oh, God, you're going to give us strength. Hallelujah. To stand in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. This morning's scripture reading, amen, is going to come from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, verses 14, Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17, chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, John chapter 6, verse 68 and 69. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And the word was made flesh, dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Beware lest any man spoil you through vain philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Then Simon Peter answers, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed are you. Praising my Savior. 
praise the Lord Bethel. Good to come into your homes or wherever you're at in this moment and give God praise for all his goodness and his mercy, his everlasting truth towards you. I pray that your dreams have been phenomenal because your dreams is a window and a glimpse into what God is going to do. Now, I don't know how long this is going to go on. But one thing I do know, he's been better to me than I've been to myself. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. It's worship time now. And as you've been hearing me say, turn your living room into a sanctuary. Set sanctify order for a few seconds in your house. Bring your altar to where your threshing floor is and expect a miracle today in the name of Jesus because he's been good to me. 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 Now go ahead and share. Go ahead and share it right now and, and tell a neighbor and tell a friend that my service at my church is on the air right now. Let, let, let me say this to you for a quick moment. Uh, uh, last week, last week, um, there was a glitch globally in the internet. There was more people streaming last week than in the very history of streaming anywhere to the point that glitches and things began to happen. And, and I think that something more than just glitches was happening because we started at 10 o'clock. And from 10 o'clock, we were able to roll just wonderfully and round about the 11 o'clock hour when most churches are having service. That's when the devil showed up the church. But I'm thanking God because shortly after that, we were able to air the program and I pray that you got the opportunity to see it and to watch it. We pray today in the name of Jesus that every hindrance and every blockage and every plan of the enemy will be stopped so that you, the people of God, can get your word from God. Now, I know that he trembles at the sight of the weakest Christian on their knees. Well, he going to be trembling because every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord of Lords, Prince of Peace, Great Eternal Wonder, Holy Counselor, Zion's Righteous Governor. He's the great I Am. So, Father, we send the anointing to homes right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Better than good to me. Better than good to me. Better than good to me. You know, these new churches, they don't clap no more. The praise and worship does everything for people. But I command you this morning to participate in the worship. Keep going, don't
to get ready this morning. He's been so good. He's been so good to me. Come on, somebody, and bless the Lord this morning. Come on and bless the Lord this morning. Amen and welcome to Bethel Family Worship Center, our service online streaming across these, these United States of America and ultimately around the world. Thank you for your correspondence that is coming to us from, from China and your correspondence that is coming to us from Italy. Now, I, I know there are naval bases in those places and stuff like that, but I am just shocked and amazed at the the, the, the reach. Uh, we have entered into what they uh, refer to as a brand new normal. The brand new normal is here, and um, I don't know how it's going to be months from now. I just know that the God I serve is able and he's worthy to be praised. So let's get ready to have church on this morning in the name of Jesus. A few announcements that I want to make to you. Uh, um, this is our first Sunday, and so it's Communion Sunday. We're going to be having communion together. I hope all of you have made your preparations, and if you went and you got your wine, drinking of the wine, 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 drinking of the wine. I hope you, hope you got your wine today. And uh, when I say wine, I don't mean go out and get, you know, night train and booms for an apple wine. I'm talking about Welch's grape juice. Let's practice some sanctification for a little while with your wine and have your wine together because we're going to fellowship with God as we normally do on first Sunday. Uh, next Sunday is Mother's Day. And so all of you who are, would like to be a part of this great Mother's Day uh, celebration on our online service, Mother's Day 2020, let's celebrate our mothers. Uh, send in your pictures to, uh, to Bethel, uh, media, Bethel Family Media uh, uh, at gmail.com. And uh, the cutoff date is May the 6th. May the 6th is the cutoff date. And um, God's going to bless you really, really, really good. I like that. I, li I like that. I like that backdrop. I like that backdrop. I, 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 and, and when I said it, I heard demons laughing in the background. I don't know if that's normal or, or, or evil spirits. I don't know what that is. But that's, 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 that's nice. The sky must not have been, been working. I saw the sky keep on uh, coming and cutting off. 
but that that's all right one two three four five six that's that, that that's good i don't know what that is but it's nice and we're gonna ride with that for a little while on on this morning um the sunday after mother's day sunday after mother's day is going to be our uh super prayer night sunday i think it's the 17th i'm not sure yes it is it's the 17th okay and we are in a special prayer for healing and restoration and debt cancellation now this is extremely important because up to date right now there are 32 plus million people unemployed right now in this nation and that's those are the ones who have uh, applied for unemployment I'm going to tell you something prophetically it's going to take two to three years to get us out of what two and three months have placed us into the whole entire United States of America is going to be on welfare I know you don't believe it because see you clapping your hands over a stimulus check and you don't understand the level of that strategy that is behind that $1,200 and your mortgage and your rent is $1,600. You're just clapping and going crazy and they've given you nothing. The way that the, let me just preach this. Can I just preach this message this morning? I, amen. I am so ready for you. So I'll, I'll come back with some more announcements later on. But the word of the Lord is coming to us today out of Romans chapter, Romans chapter number uh, 12. I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. Romans chapter number 12, Romans chapter number 12. Verses 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh-huh. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That ye may prove that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. My next scripture, my next scripture, my next scripture. Revelations 3. Revelations 3, 14. And it reads like this. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold I, or I, hot. I would be cool with you cold and I'd chill with you hot. So then because thou art lukewarm. But because of your lukewarmness. And neither cold nor hot. You're neither cold or hot. I will spew thee out of my mouth. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods. And then notice what God is saying about the lukewarm. I'm rich and I am increasing in my goods. And have need of nothing. And I don't need nothing or nobody. And mm -hmm. knowest not that thou art wretched uh -huh. and miserable uh -huh. and poor uh -huh. and blind uh -huh. and naked. Uh -huh. Miserable, poor, blind, and naked. 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 Uh -huh. Here we go. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire. I told you to stop messing with that fool's gold. I told you to stop putting your, uh, your, 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 your hope in horses and in chariots. I told you that what you was doing was only going to work for a little while, but you didn't listen to me. I tried to get you to buy into 
everlasting resources. Watch this here. I counsel thee to buy me of gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of the nakedness do not appear. And appoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke. I, I, I want you to write that down, verse 3, uh, 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 19 out of chapter number 3. Write it down. He said, for as many as I love, for as many as I love, I rebuke. For as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Uh huh. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Yeah. He said, for as many as I love, I rebuke. Uh, uh, a lot of people don't want to hear that part of the text. And this is the reason why they're having a little bit of problem with the plague that is in the land right now. Because there are those that are actually saying, a God as good as God is, Maurice, he could never allow something like this to happen. And what God is actually saying is uh, saying to you and he's saying to me, uh, Terry, he's saying that uh, who I love, I chastise. Yeah. In fact, the scripture says it actually pleases the Lord to bruise those that he loves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the scripture is actually telling you that if you have a best friend that you can't have an argument with and still eat with, then that best friend ain't your best. It says you could do a whole lot better. You're only, you, you're, you're only good when you can dog each other out with a tender heart. You get mad enough to want to walk away. And in your walking away, you remember we got a dinner date. That's true. Mm -hmm. Watch this here. Behold, I stand at the door. He said, behold, I stand at the door. And knock. And knock. If any man hear my voice. If any man hear my voice, Muslim, Buddhist, Krishna, Zeus, Zen, if any man hear my voice, white, black, Republican, Democrat, any man hear my voice and, and open the door, I will come in to him. He said, I'm coming in and, I will suck and I'm going to have dinner with you. That, that, now, that, 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 that sounds a lot far uh, away from how Christians are because Christians don't want to deal with a whole lot. The Holy Spirit told me not to fool with you. Holy Spirit told me, don't, 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 until I'm about to get ready to set out doors. And all the people that you thought was your friends don't stand up for you. Now you wind up in the home of a person that you thought was an enemy. Because the people that you think don't like you is the only people that can handle you. Oh, yeah, I'm going to preach this today. Uh-huh. Here we go. Uh-huh. The old guy stand at the door and knock. Uh-huh. And knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door. Yeah, he's slow. If any man hear my voice and open the door. Uh -huh. I will come into him. I'll come into him. And will sup with him. And will sup with him. Yeah. And he with me. And he with me. Yeah. Go to my next scripture. Go to my next scripture. We're going to talk a little bit. Joel chapter number two, uh, verse number 25. Maurice, how do you feel about this one? Here, yeah, this is how you feel about this one. Some years ago, we used to travel all over the country, all around the world. And not only did Maurice play the organ for me, but he was my reader. He was my reader. He would read the scriptures and stuff like that. And so to make sure that everything was good and fine and stuff like that, he'd dress up. He'd be dressed up sometime. I said, where the hamburger are you going? Where are you going? He said, I got to be ready, Rev, for my, for my, for my public. <laughs> for my public. And, he, and then he'd have his little commentary on the side. And so you get to open up scripture, he's reading the scripture, and he's got it. And I look down, he's looking down, he's looking down at the commentary to, to try to ride me on the commentary. I have to straighten him out. I say, wait a minute here. Ain't nobody asks you to make sure that the message is right. <laughs> I'm preaching this message tonight. Watch my scripture, watch my scripture, watch my scripture. In Joel, Joel chapter number 25, he says, and I will restore to you, uh -huh. the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, uh -huh. my great army which I sent among yes. you. Yes, uh huh. Yes, uh huh. And you shall eat it in plenty and yes. be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Father, we thank you tonight in the name of Jesus. We pray that this word that would go forth on this Sunday morning would be a word that you selected for your people's hearing. My obedience in delivering this word should bring us a corporate testimony that was good for us to be here. 
the way you're going to touch, the way you're going to heal, the way you're going to move, the souls you're going to save, the families you're going to bring together, the restoration that we're going to experience, the debt you're going to cancel, the wealth you're going to transfer. Oh God, the heavy burdens you're going to lift, the ways that you're going to make out of no way. We give your name praise in advance for it in the name of Jesus. We speak to every storm that is in front of us. For you have given us authority over the elements, over the rain, over the wind, over the storms. You have given us authority over. And we stand in our kingdom position as sons and decree and declare that this week is going to be a great week in the name of Jesus. That whatever you have given unto us, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper or take it away from us in the name of Jesus. We speak against sickness. We speak against disease. We speak against it. We speak against it right now. We speak against cancer. We speak against tuberculosis. We speak against diabetes. We speak against heart failure. We speak against it. While corona is moving, while corona is in the land, folks are forgetting that there are other diseases that are killing. We come against them in the name of Jesus too. And we give your name praise today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to use this morning for a thought. Use this morning for a thought from a person that I really, really dearly loved and is not here on earth anymore but has made his transition. Timothy Wright was a very, very close friend of mine for 30 some odd years. And the thought that I want to use comes out of the book of Revelations. And Revelation said, he said, I know thou work that thou art neither hot nor cold. I would rather that you would be hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. So my message this morning is a question. And the question simply is, whose side are you on? Amen. Whose side are you on? Now, there's no one here, not many folks here with us in the sanctuary, but I just want you to say to someone, uh, that those of you that's echoed across this empty sanctuary, whose side are you on? Who's so, who do you on? Whose side are you on? Who's so, that, 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 that's, that's the, and it's very, very easy for us to start off by saying, well, shoo, I'm on the Lord's side. Well, let's take a moment and let's take a look at that and see. The Apostle Paul is left with the task of uh, decreeing and declaring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul is not Daniel. The Apostle Paul is not a, a, a Joseph. He is not a Moses. He's not going to bring people out of Egypt into uh, the promised land. Uh, the, the, the Apostle Paul is uh, an embodiment, a, 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 rep a representative of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, he has secured a position amongst the apostles in those days as chiefest of apostles. So he's not the chief apostle, but he's chiefest of the apostles. And he gets this title simply because the other apostles had the opportunity and the, uh, and, and the ability to walk with Jesus. But the Apostle Paul didn't walk with Jesus. And one of the qualifications of being an apostle meant that you had to walk with Jesus in the flesh. Well, of course, the Apostle Paul was not able to do that. But in his season of conversion, when the Lord was now ready to uh, 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 save him and prick his heart, and he said, uh, what must I do to be saved? He had an experience. The scripture says that, uh, he, uh, the apostle Paul says, I knew a man some time ago, whether he was in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, but such a man was caught up into the third heavens, and the Lord showed him things that was not lawful for him to utter. He coming down out of the lofty places of heaven back into the realm of the earth, into the, from the sacred into the secular. And as he's making his move from the sacred into the secular, something happens to him. He is met with a messenger of Satan, and a thorn is placed in his flesh, and there is an assignment from demonic forces to make sure that he's reminded that he is flesh. 
great day in the morning. That is to remind him that he is flesh and he comes down with the memory of what he saw in the lofty places of the sacred. Uh, and he saw things that was not worthy for him to utter, that was not worthy for him to uh, even articulate simply because there was no words on earth to explain the splendor that he had experienced in his sacred place. And now he is now living now in the secular. What happens when you had an experience with God in your dream life, but it doesn't match up in your physical life when you wake up? Most of us understand that clearly. It's one of the reasons why a lot of people dream, sleep a lot, a lot, long time, because life in their dream life is a lot better than life in their reality. So they spend a lot of time. While they're dreaming, they got a house. Uh, when they're awake, they live in the projects. While they're dreaming, they got a girl. When they're awake, they, <laughs> they got an old hag. <laughs> when they sleep, they got money. When they're awake, they're broke. And so their life, the life that they live in their dream life is a lot better than the life that they live when they are awake. The Apostle Paul here in the text, he is now responsible for most of the New Testament. The 26 books in the New Testament, he writes the Pauline writings, the Pauline scriptures, and he's there. And he comes to a place where he begins to realize that if I am going to do this, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So now he says that my gain only comes at the point of death. So he's now yearning and desiring to die because his gain is to get back to what he has saw. Now, one of the problems that we're having with Christians is that they haven't had an experience with God to that point that the Christians would want to die. Now, 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 I'm not being funny. And I hear, you know, anytime time folks want to die is when ain't nothing going good down here. But when it's going good down here, you want to stay. Uh-huh, that's what it is. Lord, take me now. And then somebody shoots a gun and you ducking up under the chair. If the Lord's going to take you, he's got to send a vehicle to carry you home. <laughs> you got to go somewhere. To, what the hell are you doing up under the chair for? Why? Uh-huh, because the bullet, you're trying to escape the bullet. I thought you said you wanted to go to heaven. The bullet is your transportation to glory. But you don't want to go. You don't want to go. You don't want to go. You don't want to go to a place of the unknown. He said to live is Christ and to die is gain. This is what the Apostle Paul said. He said to live is Christ and to die is gain. He now understands that after his experience with God up in the sacred, and he now has to deal with life in the in, in, in this secular, and that the secular life is a lot different, and that if you're not carrying spirituality on the inside of you, your flesh will carry you to some places that will render you question, questionable. And so, as the Apostle Paul is moving out through life, he begins to see that the reason why a lot of people is messed up because they haven't had a real experience with God. All right? And so he writes in this particular text, he says, I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your flesh, your bodies, living sacrifices unto God. Now, that is a sort of kind of oxymoron, because how could you be a sacrifice and be alive at the same time? Sacrifice means to die. I, I, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then he says this, be not conformed to this world, to the secular, but be transformed to the sacred by the renewing of your mind, which means that you're going to live in two locations at one time. Now think about that, that you have dual citizenship. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies, living sacrifices, holy, acceptable unto God, reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The question comes up is now transformity versus conformity. Conformity. It's very, very easy for us to conform. It says, it says that, 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 that time plus time equals influence. The person that you you spend the most of your time with is the person that is influencing you the most. It is also said unto us that uh, habits form every 30 to 40 days. So certainly we've been in this for six weeks. So six weeks, if people have uh, come up with a whole different, this folks used to get up and be in, in their car on the way to church, church hour, they sleep. They've, 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 they've relaxed, they've, they've fallen back into a secular 
secular experience carrying a sacred God. When it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be having a sacred existence in a secular environment. That nothing should be able to separate you from the love of God, from the peace of God, from the relationship that you have with God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies, what? Living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. And so there are people who are never coming back to church because the law of habit the law of habit will prevent them from coming back to church. The law of habit will prevent them from being able to physically sit inside a church sanctuary and sit still because for the past six weeks or eight weeks, for however long this is going to go on, they've gotten used to sitting in front of a computer or a phone and able to, you know, and able to eat a Slim Jim while hearing the Word of God, to fry and cook food while the Word of God is going forth. So a fidgety, uh, dual type of thing where you don't give God your undivided attention is attaching itself to the children of God. And this is why it's important that somehow or another this thing is lifted so we can at least come together for a few moments to remind our flesh, to remind our children, to remind our family of how important it is, not yes or in every word, how important it is to help us through our storms. Bishop Bloom is something else. As, as we're going through storms and crises and situations in life, we must understand that God's hand is in it somewhere. So the Apostle Paul says, our greatest problem is going to be uh, uh, transformity versus conformity. And most people that you meet up with have conformed but have not been transformed. And the Bible says that the transformity will come from the renewing of one's mind. Uh, when you get a new mind, you walk right. When you get a new mind, you think right. When you get a new mind, you deal with people a little bit better. When you get a new mind. Revelations picks it up. Uh, God speaking to the seven churches at Asia Minor. Is a man, imagine that. Now here's a text that was written uh, uh, way, way in the BCs, uh, uh, and, and, uh, in, in, in the ADs, way, way, 2,000 years ago, that has its relevance in today. Uh, uh, we're dealing with a virus that comes from Asia, and the Lord is speaking to the churches in Asia Minor. And he's telling the churches at Asia Minor, I understand the condition to which you're in, and it represents a dispensation or a church age age or a church, uh, uh, yeah, a church age, how churches will function at a certain time. He says, I know your works and that thou art neither hot nor, nor, nor cold. I, I, I would that thou would hot, be hot or cold, but because thou art lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, uh, we heard that, and when I was coming up in the church, they, they, the old saints used to quote that. They still quote it. They said, hey, yeah, yeah, lukewarm people, the devil is a lie. I see the, the hey, glory, the Bible says that you must be hot, because uh, if you're hot, you're going to heaven, and, or cold, or you're going to hell. Uh, but if you're lukewarm, he spew you out of his mouth. That, that, that scripture doesn't mean anything about heaven or going to hell. Uh, the whole idea of the church that was in Asia Minor and while, why it was, uh, the attention was drawn to this term hot or cold was because they lived in a city near a hot spring. A hot spring is a body of water where there is volcanic uh, eruptions taking place up under the water that forces the water to be warm. It's like a, a jacuzzi, but it's a natural spring and it's hot. When winter comes, glory be to God, it's hot. When summer comes, it's, 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 it's hot. Uh, uh, when autumn comes, it's, it's hot. He said, I would that that would be hot or cold, but if you are lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. He's referring to the lukewarmness as not having a standard. A lukewarmness as everything is okay. He's really referring to the Laodicean church the pastors, the leaders of great and vast congregations who have now allowed the congregations to manipulate them into a worldly system. Are you hearing what I'm saying? To draw them into ungodly things. Now, 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 now please don't beat me up. Uh, if, if, if for whatever reason you want to go to a concert and you want to enjoy the concert, uh, I'll take some liberties this morning and get in trouble for everybody, okay? You want to go to a concert, Jill Scott is in town. You want to go to, the, to, to, to a concert and Jill Scott, she's in town and you with your wife and you with your husband, you with that person, your fiance, someone that you seriously 
uh, care about, and you want to go to a concert, and you went to hear uh, Jill, Jill Scott, and she's at the concert, at the, at the concert. Uh, let's take a long walk around the park after dark, uh, uh, find a spot to rest a while, uh, conversation, heaven relations, situation, and she's singing a song, and you at the concert, and you bumping, and you and you jigging, and everything is going on. That's the concert. That, that, that's the concert. You, you, you'll have some people who will have a problem with you going to that concert. And, 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 and let's not talk about Beyonce and, 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 and Jay-Z. And, and they, 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 they came to the, to the, to, 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 to the uh, uh, PNC Center. Thousands of people are standing in line to get the ticket. We just want to get a glimpse at Beyonce. And, and Beyonce and, and Jay-Z and the opening groups are there. And they all come together to have a, a, a and you uh, saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized has decided to go to the concert. The question now is, what would be wrong with that? You know, the average Christian is saying you're going to hell. It's worldly, it's worldly music. But the, you're with the person that you love. And the same, the same, the stuff that she's saying, I love you so much. I want to kiss you on your neck. I want to pinch your thigh. She's saying that, and that's what you would like to say to the person that is yours. And there's no problem with that. But here's the problem. The problem would be if I, as the bishop of the church, decided to take the entire church to the Beyonce concert, if I sold tickets in the church, in the pulpit, so that we can go to the Beyonce concert, if I told all the girls to put on leotards and bathing suits, thongs, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Uh -huh. uh, I've opened up a room on the side of the church called the Twerk Festival. Y'all in here, what I'm saying? Where they can get over there and twerk it a little bit to train because we all gonna get together as a family of believers to go down to the concert, y'all. <laughs> to go down to the concert. Uh, many, 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 many people who are listening to me right now. Bishop is crazy. What in the world is he talking about? No pastor would ever do that. You got to be out of your mind. Uh, when New Year's comes and pastors say we're going to have three and four services because we have people that would like to go to the club. So what we're going to do is that we're going to have a service that starts at 5 o'clock. So all the people who want to party and bring in the New Year's party, and they can have the word of the Lord. Now, how in the world do you get the word of the Lord and then make an exodus, a mad dash, to drinking and partying and guns being shot in the atmosphere as you bring the new year in. All philosophers tells us is how you end the year, how you begin the year is how your year is going to be. Let's do it together. How you end the year and how you begin the year is how your year is going to be. There's some people that you need to get away from. And so you, you did well, but as soon as the new year came in, you went right back to talk. So you inviting them from last year, although it was just two hours ago, in two, the first two hours into the new year, you invited that individual in your year. And now, for the next seven, eight, nine months, the negative energy of 2019 is plaguing your 2020. Boy, I wish I could preach. This is what he's talking about. He's talking about uh, a lukewarmness. He's talking about not having a standard. He's talking about anything can go. He's talking about, well, that's what you want to do. Have a free spirit. Enjoy your life. God understands. Well, when you hot and when you are on fire for God and for the things of God, many times you can go a little bit too far. But notice this, notice this. Rarely do you have someone in the world like a Beyonce, and like, uh, 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 give me the name of some artist that is out there that's doing real, real good. Huh? 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 Kanye. Uh, Con well, Kanye would be a good example. Uh, Kanye, Kanye uh, is, is, is a great example. No, no disrespect, Kanye, you know, uh, you know, I love you and stuff like that, but I'm going to tell you the truth about yourself. Kanye uh, is a great example of lukewarm, uh, not hot and not cold. He's a great example of lukewarm. He's a great example of lukewarm. He's married to the Kardashian, in the Kardashian family, who incidentally comes out of a Pentecostal experience called United Holy Church. The United Holy Church is the church that doesn't believe in watching movies. They don't believe in television. They don't believe in interracial marriages. They don't believe in facial hair. 
They don't believe in women preachers. Y'all hear me? They baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this is the kind of ministry that many of, of, of our great gospel singers have come out. Martha Manuzzi and, and, and Dickie Yoey and many of them have come out of these type of experiences and have come to a great understanding. Uh, uh, the Bradys uh, have come to a great understanding that those things there work to get me in, but they didn't have enough power to sustain me. But Kanye is a good example of a, a lukewarm person who he has uh, Baptist and Baptocostal uh, 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 experiences. He came out of a, a movement where the Baptist was making their move directly into a full gospel type of an experience. And I'm not talking about the full gospel of Paul Morton. I'm talking about the original full gospel Baptist church, which was called uh, uh, the primitive. Those were the ones that was clapping those hands and speaking in tongues. They had an experience with God. And so something happens as you're coming down out of the sacred into the the secular something happens and gives you an excuse to be mad at God to be mad at the church to be mad at the things of God but because you have experienced God God continues to show up in the spaces that are empty in your life Boy, I wish I had a church now this this, this is one of those messages for a full house I in 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 the empty spaces God starts showing up so for a number of years Kanye is able glory be to God uh, to to do his thing and the brilliance of music cannot be denied oh my god I don't care how saved and sanctified you are if you stay in the room where Kanye is playing eventually your feet is gonna start moving whether you your head is gonna bump I don't care how old you are uh, or young you are, old church mother with the white dress pleated and the earth shoes with the stocking with the knot at the top of her ankle, of her, of her, of her knee, is going to be rocking her head if she stays in that atmosphere. Why? Because he had an experience in the sacred that finds its way into the secular. Uh, Michael Jackson had that same kind of spirit on him. At certain times, glory be to God, you'd be sitting there and you didn't know whether you wanted to raise your hand or to moonwalk. Whatever the situation was, it had something to do with the connection that you had in the spirit realm with God himself. James Brown had it. Can I preach for a little while? James Brown had it. Oh, oh, yeah. I know he was singing, but when he got through, glory be to God, his dancing and his shouting and his singing on that stage, at a certain time, you would find your foot patting and your head moving. You got to get out of that situation. Why? Because it's a lukewarm one. Kanye, glory be to God, for a number of years, didn't hear nothing about God, didn't talk about God, didn't speak nothing about God. But now, uh, all over the country, all over the world, that have those pop-up services where he is bringing people back to God because in the empty spaces if you ever had an experience with God in your empty spaces God still shows up you got to be very very careful what you say to people you have to talk, but be very careful we tell you who's backslidden and who's really really with God because you don't know what the situation is in those empty spaces the empty spaces that messengers of Satan comes to buffer us and to remind us that we had an experience with God and the experience with God is now showing up in my empty spaces I was watching one night on television the Kardashians and, 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 and Kanye and, 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 and what's her name? Her name is Kim, right? Uh, they're having a the talk. And uh, he was saying, I didn't like to see you at the concert the other night. She said, what was wrong? He said, well, your breasts were showing and, 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 and your, your clothes was a little bit too tight. And she said, wait a minute here. I've been dressing like this for a long time. You met me like this. This is how you would, yeah, yeah, I, I, I met you like that. And, 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 but I don't want you to do that no more because you know I'm now... Uh, becoming very spiritual. She stopped them and she said, wait a minute here. Do not force me on the journey that you're on. That's your journey. That's not my journey. You see, in the empty spaces, glory be to God, if you had an experience with God and that experience with God was hot and that experience with God was powerful, when, uh, when it shows up, all of the condition shows up. So now he's sounding like a sanctified church pastor. Cover up. Put the earth shoes back on. Wear the pleated skirts and the pleated dresses simply because uh, he's in a situation where he has gone hot in a lukewarm situation. He has gone hot in a lukewarm situation. He has gone hot 
in a lukewarm situation, wanting to gather and carry people into it with him, and they're not willing to go. He says, I know your works. I know that you're neither hot nor cold. Uh, if you were hot, I'd deal with you. She's saying to him, says, listen, if I knew that you really, really loved God the way that you said that you love God and stop forsaking God when things don't go your way, I would follow you. But since I see that you here today and over there tomorrow, there's no, nothing from that. So I know that you're just gigging. This is your next gig, buddy. I love you. You're my husband. You're the father of my children. But I'm not going to follow you as you try to follow God. Why? Because she also has an experience. She has an experience when you don't watch TV. She has an experience where women can't preach. He has an experience where you cannot marry. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Or someone that is not in your culture. She had an experience. And all of those doctrines just burned away. And now she's having a come back to Jesus moment. An experience with God that is her own personal journey. And one might call her cold. The other one might call her hot. The other one might say she's uh, lukewarm. Whatever the situation is, the text is talking about that. The coronavirus has an assignment. The assignment of the coronavirus is to put the world in a hot spring, to put the world next to a hot spring and to suggest that while things are cold, let me see if you're going to get into the hot water or if you're going to come up out of the hot water because things have gotten hot. If you read the commentary on the text, you will find out that lukewarm water uh, will help you or will assist you in catching colds. It will assist you in catching viruses. It will cause you to throw up. It will have you to have fevers and chills, lukewarm. And this is the place that the church is in. Anytime God is getting ready to do something, he sends uh, a lukewarm act atmosphere to see who among us will stand and receive the medication that he is pouring out. He says, listen, you're trying to buy your way out of this situation, but you can't do it. And the price that you're paying is too cheap for anyone to even sell their soul. Who in God's name is going to give up their entire life for $1,200? And the $1,200 is three months late. We're still waiting on stimulus to show up. The stimulus was poured out. Small businesses were supposed to profit by it and what happened cruise ships that don't even put their pay taxes in the country got big uh, 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 stimulus uh, banks and 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 car dealerships and 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 airplane airlines and all the big companies universities who are sitting on tons of money tons of endowments snatch the money and the poor pastor is going to the bank and to sign up and they say it's all dry dried up. It's all gone. Traffic is in the street uh, in front of, 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 of food banks, not able to feed people. And now they're scratching their heads because just a few months ago, the average person that was going to the food bank was Latino. Uh, the second group was African Americans. But now they're looking up, glory be to God, and airline pilots are in their car. Uh, FBI agents in the car. Uh, the entire nation is being brought to a situation where you're going to have to make a choice. Whose side are you on? Whose side are you on? It's what God is asking and it's what the pastor of this church is asking you. I know that when uh, we come back to this building, I know that when we come back to this house, I know when we come back to this fellowship, many are coming back and many are not. I know that we're going to experience one of the greatest soul harvests of all time, but I'm not sure I'll be able to recognize your face. Uh, camera number three, I'm not sure that I'll be able to recognize your face. Uh, there are faces of people that I'm looking at. These are the faces of individuals that I've been in contact with throughout this corona situation. But I pastor a decent sized church and I'm waiting for the others to send in their photos saying that Bishop I'm standing with you in our hot situation. We refuse to get cold and God knows in heaven lukewarm is not our condition, nor is it an option for us. We're sticking with this and sticking with you until we come out of this on 
on top. I wish I had a church. Camera number three. Ah, for six weeks, I've been preaching in a sanctuary to empty people. A few f f folks that come in here, and in order to get them to clap, I have to give them a signal. Because you know they ain't say sanctified holy. They lukewarm themselves. I got to give them a signal. See, see, uh, see, 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 I got to rock my signal in order to make it. But in this season, I found out one thing, that uh, I don't need a crowd uh, to talk about Jesus. I, I, I don't need a group to talk about Jesus. I had an experience with God, and God said to me, I want you to understand that what we are going through in this season has nothing to do with demons or devils. It has absolutely nothing to do with how good you are or how bad you are. It's simply me realigning the entire earth. They are going to know and see who God is is. I'm going to establish my church. I'm going to bring order to my church. I'm going to bring order to my leadership and those that refuse to follow, I'm not going to put them in hell, but I'm not going to allow them to live. So as a result of that, you're seeing preachers make exits at this particular time. Individuals who walk strong and walk powerful are no longer on the planet. Every single week, another named known preacher is dropping, glory be to God, for God is securing that individual in sleep. For the Bible declares that if you sleep in the Lord, your security to heaven is locked. But those of us who are alive and remain, we got to wait to see what the changes is going to be like. In this particular season, what we're going through, he says, I want to first send in the disease. Then I want to send in the army. And after I send in the army, I'm going to send in stimulus and compensation. He says in the book of Joel, he says, listen, that which the canker worm did not eat, the palmer worm did, and what the palmer did not eat, uh, that worm did. Uh, different worms came to eat different things and to devour the land completely. He says, I'm proud of it because it's my great army, the locusts. Anytime God wanted to clean out an area, he sent in a plague. He sent in the plague of the days of Isaac, for the Bible declares that Isaac was in the land and there was a plague a, a, a drought a famine in the land that was worse than the famine of his father and he said do not go down to Egypt don't go to Atlanta don't go to California don't go to Fayetteville stay right where you are and in the midst of what you're doing I want you to get a seed and sow a seed and Isaac sowed a seed in the land and reaped in the same year a bountiful harvest great day in the morning the Bible declared declares that he grew richer and richer by the day until he was very wealthy. And the Bible said, and he accumulated. I come to tell you that the season of accumulation has just hit you in the midst of unemployment. Uh, Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. For the first time, for the first time in, they say now, in about 80 years, you can see the full skyline of New York City. For the first time in 80 years, there's no smog in California. For the first time in 80 years, uh, glory be to God, when you're going through the, the, the now of Egypt, the water is clear. The water is clear in Coney Island. And if you've ever been to Coney Island from Brooklyn, New York, and see how dirty and muddy that ocean water is it is clear right now ah you can see the sky because folks are not on the street and that the carbonation is not no longer in the air everything is realigning itself they say that the rats in New York City are eating the, each other because there's not enough trash that's been gathered in the street because of the population that's on the street corner great day everyone. God is realigning and reassessing and this is what he said he says I'm getting ready to set up something but the lukewarm folks are not going to be able to make it in. Ah, when God told, went to Moses, he said to Moses, he said, Moses, I want you to lead the children of Israel out, but I want you to teach them how to do it. I don't want them to just come out first. I want them to go in first. When he said to Noah, Noah, I want to bring you to a place of absolute total deliverance, but I don't want to bring you out first. I want to teach you how to go in first. When he said to Lot, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying, to Lot, he said, Lot, I want you to understand this. I'm going to bring the city of Sodom and Gomorrah out, but I don't want to bring them out first. I want to teach you how to go in. In every situation, watch this here. He says, glory be to God, to, to Noah. Noah, get your family, get the animals, and go in and shut the door. 
He said then to Lot, he said, Lot, those men are coming in there, them whoring men, looking after men, devouring the land. It's going to burn. It's going to tear. He said, go in and what? Shut the door. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. And the children of Israel on the eve of them coming up out of Egypt, where the angel was going to swoop down and destroy all the firstborn, he said, go in and shut the door. When one door closes, another door opens up. I come to tell you that this is the day of open doors. But first, you got to go in for a little season and shut the door. And every lukewarm individual is not going to make it. The Bible tells us that they knew not when that this was going to happen until the rain came and took them away in Noah's days, simply because they were lukewarm. And out of their lukewarmness, glory be to God, it's raining for the first First time and they've never seen rain before and they still partying and drinking and whoring and gambling and doing all that they do and the rain is coming something that they never saw before you would think it would set order in their life huh? yes sir huh? in Lot's days glory be to God they have never seen fire come down in brimstone in the form of brimstone huh? and burn up the entire city they had never saw glory be to God volcanic eruptions huh? never saw it before but it didn't stop their, their philandering. It didn't stop their homosexuality activities. It did not stop their lifestyle. They kept on coming until the angels had to come and burn the whole city up. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. The children of Israel found themselves shut in on Passover and they were inside and the Lord said, do not come out no matter what you hear. Do not come out because I brought you in in order to bring you out. What are you saying, George Bloomer? I'm telling you huh, that we've never seen a virus huh, like this shut down an entire nation huh, and then an entire world huh, global everywhere huh, banks are closed huh, everywhere personal businesses are shut down huh, every Everywhere. The storms are everywhere. There's no place you can go on the planet. No place with pristine rivers. No place where private jets can fly. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. They had a report the other day that glory be to God that folks on the space stations, glory be to God on the Russian side, are having effects in space on Corona, which means that there's no place where you can hide. Where in the world are you going to hide? When God's hand is released in the land. Yeah, he said, come on in and shut the door because I'm going to do a brand new thing. And I come to tell you in a few days, something is going to lift. And when it lifts, the glory that you experienced before will not be able to compare to the glory that's about to happen when it comes around this time. The glory of the former house, uh -huh, the latter house, will not be like the former house. There is a glory that is coming. Now, Bishop, what are you saying? I'm telling you huh, that God is about to reward every person huh, who stayed in their place. Huh. He's about to reward every individual huh, who kept their eyes on Jesus. Huh. He's about to reward every person huh, who kept their face in the book, huh, who kept their testimony, huh, who kept on praising him huh? in the midst of the storm whoever you are huh? grab a hold to the horns of the altar huh? and hold fast to the altar huh? and begin to praise God huh? I don't care how bored you get huh? I don't care how much pain you go through huh? I don't care how much suffering you deal with huh? hold on to the horns of the altar cry out to God huh? and ask the Lord to bring you out huh? because you're about to come out huh? ah, somebody huh? at home need to look at a family member huh? somebody huh? who is watching this on the job need to look at a member on the job huh? and just go to shaking your head because huh? only God can deliver us out of this huh? as it was in the days of Noah huh? so shall it be in the days of covert 19 huh? that folks are acting like nothing is going on huh? you don't see the mask huh? you don't see the gloves huh? you don't see see people dying. Huh? You don't see people dropping like flies. Huh? And you still playing a game. Huh? The devil is a liar. Huh? So I decided huh, to stay in huh? and to stay hot. Huh? To keep my eyes on Jesus. Huh? I'm so scared. Huh? I'm scared to touch a doorknob. Huh? Every time somebody come in my house, huh? I say wash your hands. Huh? Take your shoes off. Huh? Strip butt 
naked and go take a shower. I ain't allowing nobody to bring nothing my way. I'm going to stay right under the blood and the world can't do me no harm. One of these old mornings, I'm going to preach real good. I'm going to preach so good that guys like Victor will feel the Holy Ghost. It's hard preaching to some Negroes. It's hard looking. I turn my back and preach anyhow. And then when I turn my back, I wind up seeing somebody else that is hard to preach to. Y'all ain't hearing me. But I tell you, Bethel, in a few days, a shaking in is coming. In a few days, a shaking in is coming. And when God gets ready, he's going to bless you like he's never blessed you before. I don't know about nobody else. I'm not calling anything into existence. I'm not asking God to do no strange stuff. But I'm going to tell you this. In this church, as far as I've seen so far, ain't nobody got the disease. In this church, ain't nobody sick yet. In this church, we're covered under the blood of Jesus. And I want you to know, he said, when all of this is past, I will restore unto you the years, the months, the weeks, the days of your sacrifice. Everything, 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 everything I told you, I'm going to perform it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. But you got to stay on the Lord's side. In this day, there's a lot pulling at you. Pulling on the internet. Pulling on YouTube. Pulling on Periscope. Pulling on Facebook. Pulling on Snapchat. Pulling on Instagram. And not to mention those freaky dicky things that's been pulling on you. Late in the midnight hour. But who report are you going to believe? I shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says I'm healed. His report says I'm covered. His report says I'm delivered. His report says I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. Stay Stay in the house. And if you're in, you're on the Lord's side. Whose side? Whose side? Whose side are you on? Yeah! Yeah! I'm on the Lord's side. I'm on the Lord's side. I don't always do right. I'm not the most perfect of perfect. But Lord, you know who I am. You know the way I take my down sittings, my uprisings. Say yeah! Whose side you on? 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 You gotta ask somebody that question. Whose side you on? Who and and you don't switch sides because things don't go your way. You don't switch sides because things don't turn out the way you wanted to turn out. I'm in a relationship with God, sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes level to the ground, but he always shows up in a timely fashion to bring me back to my right mind, and that's why I'm asking you, and I'm asking you, and I'm asking you, whose side you on, you gotta testify to somebody, you gotta tell somebody that I'm on the Lord's side, and there's nothing that can happen, there's nothing that can go on, there's nothing that can go good enough to make me leave, or bad enough to make me leave, I'm stuck with Jesus and he's stuck with me. I'm on the Lord's side. Somebody better praise him in the praise him in the building. Praise
praise him in your home. Praise him. Praise him in front of the television. Praise him. Praise him. Ah, I feel a Shabbat coming on. Ah, I feel a Shatarabah. I feel her. And a Shabbat comes from the word Shabiri. It means to confuse the enemy. I feel like confusing demons. I feel like blessing his name. Yeah. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on the Lord's side. I'm on the Lord's side. I'm on the Lord's side. Whose side are you on? I'm on. I'm on. I'm on the Lord's side. Oh, yes. Oh. On your job, put your hands together. Watching overseas, put your hands together. Woo! Woo! Come out of your lukewarm situation and return back to your hot spring situation where the Lord is Lord. And beside him, there is no other. Mm -hmm. You've been running, running, running for a long time. Your time is winding up. You better make up your mind. Getting late in the evening. Sun is going down. You better get right, get right, right where he may be found. I want to, want to ask you. Running, eh, running, running for a long time. Your time is winding up. You better make up your mind. Get it late in the evening, and the sun is going down. You better get right, get right, right where he may be found. I want to know where. If you're on the Lord's side, get up! Hey, if you're on the Lord's side, I'm on! I'm on! I'm on the Lord's side! I'm on! I'm on! I'm on side! dancing in their living room right now. Somebody praising it right now. Because I answered the question. Because I answered the question. Because I answered the question. I'm on the Lord's side. Mm. I'm on the Lord's side. Woo! I'm on the Lord's side. He said, if you're hot or you're cold, I'll spew you out of my mouth. 
no more lukewarm. We ain't never seen nothing like this. Ain't never seen nothing like this. There's a whole generation in California that never seen blue skies. There's a whole generation in California that never seen the stars in the midnight hour over Crenshaw. Ah, shatalaba. There's a whole generation of young people who in Times Square has never been able to walk down the street without coming in contact with trash and rats. Uh, change is coming. Change is coming. Things are changing. They're not gonna stay the same. Change is coming. Change is coming. Change, 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 don't change till change, 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 change. Change is coming. are so hungry, Terry, rats, so hungry that they turned on each other and began to devour themselves. CNN said, reports everywhere, God is realigning, he's reestablishing, he's feeding us, he's sending manna from heaven, and he wants me to tell you, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So you better make up your mind whose side you going to be on.
keep on hearing in my ear and in my spirit, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up. He's not even waiting for you to tell him whether you're on his side or not. He just wants you to get up. God praise give him praise right where you are whose side whose side whose side are you on there's somebody today that just tuned in for the first time you see the rejoicing and the singing and the praises going on and you're pricked in your heart and out of the pricking in your heart you want to know how can I connect? I want every pastor who might be watching to understand this principle here. Principle of my sheep know my voice and another they were not here. Through locations and separations, sometimes we don't get the opportunity to hear the voice of our shepherd. But when we do, change immediately takes place. Just the other day, someone was listening to our daily show, Wolf Ecology, General's Daily Briefing, and said to a pastor that knows me, he said, I don't mean no harm. Bishop Bloomer is my pastor. He said, well, wait a minute, you, you have a pastor? Yeah, I got my I go to a church, but these past few days, these past few weeks, he speaks to my soul. He speaks to my inner person. That's my pastor. That's what this shut in seclusion is going to do. And many people is going to help them to identify and locate the voice that you're assigned to. I had to find mine. You have to find yours. It is not in the well carpeted, well pewed church with the dynamic band and the excellent lighting show, celebrity pastor. All of it is good. You can visit. But if that's not who your spirit is assigned to, you will be malnutrition. Somebody needs Jesus today. So Lord, save now. Heal, deliver, set free. In Jesus' name. Without carrying you through the whole ritual of all, just say, Lord, I want to be a Christian. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. He knows your heart. He says in Revelation, I stand at the door and knock, and anybody that opens the door, I'll come in and sit with him, and he with me. You just answered the question. I asked you a question. Who's on the Lord's side? And by asking him to come into your heart, you said, I am. Do it for them now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Be pleased to receive the word of the Lord on today and 
answer the question properly. Whose side are you on? I'm on the Lord's side. It's communion. It's communion Sunday. It's communion Sunday. And I want to commune with you today. Remembering his sacrifice that he's made for you. That you are the recipient of that sacrificial blood that flows from Calvary's mountain, blood that gives us strength. We do this in remembrance of you. Between the wings of a cherubim, I will worship you, O God. If you can, get a shot of the stand where the communion is at. There are five cups. Five is the number of grace. I'm going to ask God to grace you with finances, good health, great family relationships. With a brand new awareness of him. And finally, finally, gift of restoration that you receive it all in the name of Jesus. As we pour grace into this cup, the word of the Lord says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. These two communions that we had during seclusion and lockdown or shut-in, whatever you want to call it, has been amongst the most sacred and important to me. Because the way that we practice communion here is that we don't just rip the bread off and eat it and take the little cup and take it to the head. We don't do that here. We pour in each other's cups. For we drink out of one cup. We pour in each other's cups. It, it requires a little bit of time. It forces the touching and connecting. In this season, where they are demanding social distance, the way we commune would be impossible. The way you commune is fine. And that's why many of you can have drive-by communions. Just pick up a cup and drink it. But I always have a little touch different to it. So we ask in the Lord that as we break this bread, it is his body that was broken for us in pieces that he was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities, chastised over something that we did, but he took, and then took a brutal beating and mobbing by a mob so that our wounds can supernaturally dry up and heal. And because he's God yesterday, today and forever what he did he has done and what he's done he did and 
So today, you're healed. Take and eat ye all of it. If you don't mind, pass them out some communion. There's a few over there that you should give two to. Though your sins be as scarlet, he'll make you whiter than snow. One won't be enough. How many you got? You gonna need more than that? That's all you got? No, no, the work with what you got. Work with what you got. Praise our God. There's some of us who, during this journey, are fasting. Some of us is losing weight. Other of us is gaining weight. I bet you forgot this communion song. Between the wings. That's too high for me. <laughs> you forgot the communion ability. It's okay. You can't remember everything. Thank God. You hear well. You don't see well, but you hear well. Be between the wings of a cherubim. I don't know why I stay in such a high pitch. Come you with me. You, you're right. I'm wrong. I, 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 I but I can't get in. I can't get into the. All right, the usher's coming and giving you that, that communion. Some of us, when we gain weight, we gain weight in one place. <laughs> Small legs and big belly. Well, let me, let me change that. Some of us gain weight everywhere. the communion song between the wings of a cherubim every time I say cherubim I, 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 I just take that's my voice and carry me someplace to remind you of <laughs> you are in trouble Bethel being online does not change us from being who we are you are in a real service and a real experience with us take and eat all of it hallelujah I just heard something. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything, 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 anything.
This is symbolic of the blood of the Lord Jesus and the blood that covers. Five things are mixed in this cup today that you're going to receive when you drink all of it. Bless us now for restoration, for finances, for health, for family, for us to be restored back to all that the enemy tried to take from us during this realignment. In Jesus' name, take and drink all of it. Hallelujah. 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 Whose side you on? Whose side you on? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Camera three. You faces that sent your pictures in has helped me to preach to you and helped me to preach in this place today. Thank you so much. You can continue to send to the entire sanctuary. It can be filled with your presence as we go forth and minister the word of the Lord until this is lifted in Jesus name amen well it's the first Sunday of the month and we're about to move into an area called summer and every year I talk to you about summer blues and not allowing the summer blues to come on us and get to us I still believe in kingdom economy and that the Lord is going to protect us and he's going to bless us well and real good. So I'm asking you to prepare yourself to sow your seed here at Bethel Family Worship Center. Last week's glitches threw us off a little bit and I'm praying that today, this morning, we will recover all in the name of Jesus. I'll be talking to many of you in our after service today at three o'clock. Join me in my home. Just wanna to talk to you and pray with you and stay connected to you. That's all, that's all, that's all. Okay, so get your offering together. The tithe is holy, it belongs to the Lord. It's not yours, give it to God and he'll give it back to you, good measures pressed down, shaken together, running over. All right? Three ways to give, three ways to sow. Text Bethel, text to give, online giving, and uh, cash app. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Text to give, text Bethel to 844-888-9185. Online giving, BethelFamily.org. Cash app, dollar sign, BFWC, 515. 515. Leave it there for a moment. 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 Get your seed. Get your seed, get your seed, get your seed, get your seed. Those of you that understand the Taroma and the Taroma giving according to the word of the Lord, that out of all of your obligations, you shall bring a priest, a portion of your dough that he may consume it and the consumption of it causes the glory of the Lord to remain at your house. Four ways that you can sow your Taroma seed. Cash app, dollar sign, big guy Bloomer. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal, PayPal, me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Fifteen fifty nine. 
1559. Many of you understand and know that we've been under the greatest and the largest attack that the world has ever seen. All of the gains that was won over the three years of the presidency, stock market, every gain, job gains, everything, all lost in two months. And you still asking us to sow a seed? Yes, because plagues and famines for the believers are seed sowing time. It's designed for you to show who your God is. And Isaac sowed and reaped in the same year. If you're on the Lord's side, he will provide for you. Three ways to give. Three ways to give. Three ways to give Bethel Family Worship Center. Three ways. Making your way up steps. Making your way into the garage to get your pocketbook out of the garage. Text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving, BethelFamily.org. Cash app, dollar sign, BFWC 515. So you see today, so you see today. Ooh. Whose side are you on? Whose side you on? I still hear it ringing in my ear. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up, 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 get up. Maybe it's dancing time for you at your house. Get up, 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 get up. Woo! Get up. Four ways to sow your Taroma seed. Four ways to sow your Taroma seed. Cash app, dollar sign, big guy bloomer. Zell bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal, PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. The 17th, the 17th of this month is going to be another awesome prayer night. And I'm believing God for tons of you on the prayer call and in session. My daughter Jessica was with me on that. I believe in that she's going to be with us today in the after service. So join us for the after service uh, today at 3 o'clock for the after service. Mother's Day is coming. Uh, get up. Mother's Day. Mother's Day celebration. Mother's Day celebration. Can you believe it? We just left Easter and Mother's Day is already here. If ever there was a time to celebrate mothers, this is, this is going to be the one. It's going to be a hard one. Restaurants will be closed. It's going to be a hard one. Buy up all the flowers you can. Sanitize them and get ready to be a blessing to your mother. Three ways to give at Bethel. Three ways to give. Three ways to give. Three ways to give and sow your seed. Three ways, three ways, three ways, three ways, three is. Text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving, BethelFamily.org. Cash app, dollar sign, BFWC 515. Taroma seed given, four ways that you can sow that seed. Cash app, dollar sign, big guy bloomer, Zell, bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal, PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text bloomer to 844-889-1559. Remember, I'm on every single day at four o'clock and we have a host of guests this week on Monday, we had BK Wellness along with Apostle Adelia Seymour. On Tuesday, we had Bernard Jordan. 
on Wednesday. Today we had uh, BK and we ha also had Bishop Mark House. Tomorrow, Apostle Shirley Brown and Bishop Bloomer. And then on Friday, Pastor Reverend Dr. Jamal Bryant will be with us. Next week, we'll be sharing with you the host of special guests that will be joining us on this special time. Friday, we close out the week with our Friday's prayer. Friday, we close out the week, and Sunday, we open it up. Make sure you are a part of this. This prayer call is all of about maybe 15 minutes or so. No reason or excuse for you not to be a part of it. Don't let people outside the fellowship outdo you. I'm looking to hear from Bethel in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Okay, last time, three ways to sow. Three ways to sow. Three ways to sow. Three ways to sow. Four ways to sow your Taroma. And remember, I don't care what you're going through, what you're dealing with, stay on the Lord's side, and the Lord will be there for you. He knows how much you can bear. He knows it, he knows it, and he will perform tremendous miracles for you in your life. Those of you, we're getting ready to go into our special prayer time, and uh, I want you to send your prayer requests to, send prayer requests to, uh, Prayer at bishopbloomer.com. Prayer at bishopbloomer.com. I want to pray for you. Put your prayers and your requests on the altar and believe God for you in the name of Jesus. Okay? So I'm going to spend some time with you today. I'll see you in the after service at 3 o'clock and the closing of the opening of the week tonight at 8 o'clock. I'll see you there. May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with you now and forevermore. Your seeds are blessed, your obedience is blessed, and you will be blessed. Remember this, go in, shut the door, go into seclusion for a little while until the anger, wrath of God has passed. Go home, sanctify yourself, sanitize your home, love your children, sow a seed, worship God. I'll see you later on in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.